Hello, hello, and welcome again to Tello's Voice. We've had a little bit of a technical difficulty today um, using uh, StreamYard, nothing to do with StreamYard. For some reason we could not connect. So I had to say goodbye to you on that platform and use Zoom. I hope that's okay and it didn't cause you too much confusion. So with me today, I have a wonderful guest, a beautiful man who um, I've had the pleasure to talk to before and um, there was so much information there that I had to just invite her uh, to be back on Della's voice so that he could share more of his knowledge. His name is Jacques Vincent. I want to say that in the French way, Jacques Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing off. That's um, all right. Jack is an international best-selling author and a transformational speaker and a wonderful business coach. Uh, Jack has been married to his wife for 35 years and he's a father of four. One of his passions in life is to help businesses um, transform their level of success. So I am so, so excited to bring Jack on today as he's going to help us recognize what our personality type is and also what sort of a love language do we speak. So Jack, Welcome, Andela's voice. Well, hi, Della. Uh, it is such an honor to be invited on your on your platform. You know, like uh, to me, it, it is such an honor to just to be part of your show. And uh, I've been watching your show for uh, with so many people on it. And uh, I tell you, it's a uh, it's a privilege to be on your show. Well, well let me tell you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you. Let me tell you what, my friend. I'm. It's my honor to have you here. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Uh, I can't wait for people to get to know all about what you have to offer. So let's just jump right in. Uh, but I want to first introduce you to the audience in a way that's not really about what you do today, but really where you started from, because there's so much inspiration in, in that story. So why don't you take us back just a few years ago to where you started and what kind of trials and um, struggles did you have to go through to get here? Super, well, that's my pleasure to share with the people. Yes, I am out of a little bit of a subject, but at the end, you'll find out that everything actually ties in together. So uh, being in business at young age, I'm born in the Eastern Township of Montreal in Quebec. And uh, a uh, young age at 17 years old, my dad, I'm born on a farm. So my, do my dad sold the farm. I was the last of the nine kids staying on a farm. So obviously we couldn't do everything that we, that, that we could do with me and my dad. So my dad had to sell the farm. And having said that, when my dad sold the farm, he actually sold it from, for, uh, to a Switzerland people. And their French is not the same French as I speak. You know, it's a Parisian French and Quebec French is kind of a slangy French, if you wish. So we really had a hard time to connect at first because even though I live in the same house, but everything has changed, you know, like I have the same farm, the same house, but now I have no more parents living with me. And even though they, were, they spoke French, I actually didn't understand them and didn't understand me. And I kind of went into a rebellion at that time. And just a few months later, I had a big motorcycle accident, which is, uh, was a, a bad one. And uh, by the, 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 I would say, by the thank of God, he, he, he made me pull through. <laughs> so after I, I uh, recuperated from my injury, I had an invitation to move in, uh, in uh, I would say in Calgary, Alberta. And which two days later, I was actually on the car with my buddy moving to Calgary, Alberta. And, uh, and at young age, uh, I, was the, I was 19 years old, I believe, when I moved there, 18 years old when I moved there. And, and just a few months later, the economy went to crap, I guess you can say, in, in, in 1982 in, in, in Alberta. And, and, and I learned woodworking by trade when I was to school. So I went, I learned finishing and, and woodworking. And having said that, uh, I always had something to fall back on, I guess, as, a, I've, as I can say. 
And, and at 19 years old, I started my own first woodworking shop part-time, you know, and, and doing odd jobs to make a living at that time. And at 21 years old, I had a chance to start a, a, a woodworking shop full-time with a partner. And so it's, it started, I got married the same year as I started my business. So me and my wife actually decided to wait maybe five years to, before we had kids so that we have time to give it all to the business. But little did I know that, uh, you know, 12 years later, my smaller shift in business was 80 hours a week. That was my smallest week in 12 years. Uh, let's put it this way. I always thought me, we, we start businesses to have a quality of life, but we find out sometimes that we had no life till one day I met a great friend of mine that uh, was a millionaire and he asked me to spend a day with him and one of his friends, which he was a multimillionaire. He had boats, yacht, everything you can ask. He had it, but such a great man. And uh, of course I agreed to go to that meeting and that they completely, completely changed my life. The way I view life, the way I view, uh, you know, family, because I always thought I was a, a, a family man. I always thought I was a great husband. But, you know, it's hard to be a great husband when you're not home. And as you're going to find out a little bit later on, I think the reason my wife stuck with me, you will find out in, in, a, in, in a few minutes or in a little bit, is you'll find out why. Because that will be part of the love language. The way we speak to our mate, the way to speak to our, to our partners is, is a type of love that we give, you know, like a when when we first married everything is beautiful everything but why does it usually fall apart down the road you know love is kind of a relationship kind of like a garden you know it's uh you have to maintain it even though after you planted the seed you have to maintain the garden you got to pull out the weeds out of the garden to for the garden to give uh, fruits or vegetables at the end of the year you know so can... Okay, hold it right there, Jack. Hold it right there. Because this is the point when I'm going to invite people who are watching to please share this talk because you just never know how this is going to affect the people you love yeah. and you cherish, right? Because we all we can all use a little bit of, what did you say? Weeding the garden <laughs> when it comes to our relationships, yeah. right? Yeah. We need to learn how to how to talk to our loved ones because that's not easy, is it? So no. I've shared. Okay, so I, it's actually streaming live on Facebook, so you can take a moment if you like and go find. Uh, I, 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 I'm actually telling you. Uh, I was gonna say I got. It's not. I don't see it on mine somehow. So it's. Yes, it's because it's, um, you know how we had that technical difficulty? Yeah, okay, it's not so, coming in on my end. Right. Maybe you can tell me about it and then I'll, I can answer from there. Um, okay, yes, I will definitely do that. So um, I just wanted to make sure that you, the people on your uh, page could also watch because they wouldn't be able to find this. So um, if, uh, if you go to your notification, you'll see that I have tagged you in a live post and um if you see it now you can sh you can go to that post if it do you no. see that it says Della Futui has tagged you in your notification no I don't have a let me see here uh and um and no, that's okay. I don't, have it, a, I don't have a tag, no. Let me see here. All I have is uh, on the celebrity, you is De La Fuluti, De La's Voice, August 10, no. So, uh, and and that's okay. I'm going no, to tag it as in. Celebrity You. And I will tag, ta well, it's tagged. So you can share it later. It's not a problem. Okay. So um, I just, uh, I wanted to, have make sure that your friends are also watching this, but that's okay. So uh, people who are watching this show, you are welcome to please give us comments and your questions as the show goes on and please share this. Give us a thumbs up to make sure that we know you're here. Let us know where you're watching from and let's keep this interactive. Okay, Jack, back <clears throat> to you. 
Oh, back to kind of back to my story basically is uh, after I had that meeting with those two fellows is if they, they turned on so many light bulb, I think in my head that day and, and I, I knew I was on the wrong path, even though I was doing what I was passionate about, which is a woodworking. And, but I wanted something better for me or for my life or for my family. So after that, after that meeting, I went back to uh, I went back to work the next day, and I actually told my partner that he had three months to find himself a new partner. I had better things to do than just working, and and part of part of the uh, the meeting that we had with the other two fellow is they were talking about you know personal growth so much is is you no know, they were telling me you know let's say um, how would I say. They would, they would say, you know, like formal education will make you a living, but, but um, how, did, how did they say that? Formal education will make you a living, but uh, uh, self-education will make you a fortune. And, and, you know, you don't think about it like that when, when you first hear that, but you'll find out that as we go through the, the, the stuff today that it is so important, like I said, they, it's not what the book costs. That's important to understand. It's actually how much it's going to cost you if you don't actually read the information that are in books. And, and you, you know, you, so you take good. that lightly when you first hear it, but yes. everything, every experience that people has had, use that putting in, they put them into books. And if you want to learn about something, how we go to school, what's the first thing we do? We have a teacher, which is basically a mentor, and what do we have for homework? Well, we got to read books. We got to do our homework. And that's how, how we learn in life from a formal education side of it. But when you get into the personal uh, side of it is you got to want to go to school. Education does not end after school. You know that the rest, you have the rest of your life to live the life that you want, but yet not, but there's no school is over. So where do you get your information on? So it's very important where you get your information to make sure that uh, it aligns with your dreams, your goals, uh, your, your wants in life. Because I was told by those two guys, they said, you know, Jacques, that, and it's not about money. It's not what the money, it's what the money can do for you, for your family, for, for everything. Because he says that 95% of the people are financially broke in North America just broke at different levels, you know, at financial levels. Some are broke at minimum salary. Some are broke making millions a year because 95% of the people live 10 to 30% above what they earn, no matter how much they earn in life. So the story is, is, is what you have to pay attention to is it's, it's not how much you earn that's important to understand. It's what you do with you earn that's important to understand. So having said that, you know, when he, he asked me that first question, he asked me, say, Jacques, knowing that 95% uh, of the people are financially broke, so where do you take your financial advice from? I tell you, that was food for thought for a, a, a minute or two. I, I really didn't know. Actually, when you start thinking about where do you take your financial advice from? And the same goes into couples when they live life, they get together, they move into an apartment or a house, and their life begins together. And most couples in their lifetime would always go once a year in holidays or whatsoever, anything that they plan together for a week or two weeks of their life during the year for their holidays, they actually go that they can afford it or cannot afford it. So you imagine how important it is in planning something, how important it is because it doesn't matter if you can afford it or not, you'll go. So imagine if the couple was to actually sit down at the table this is the reason why most couples don't get what they want out of life and it is so simple is write it down write it down with the both of them together plan your life together and most likely you'll end up there because you've planned it so having said that it is more to life than just being in a relationship it's how to get along in a relationship first at first, no, love is blind, as they say. But as you grow into a relationship, is you get comfortable. And, and being comfortable, it's not necessarily good because sometimes 
we we grow apart when we have children and all that stuff the highest rate of divorce in in relationship is actually when the kids leave the nest then you find yourself back to your with you and your partner together and he said who are you <laughs> so it's important like i say about weeding weeding uh, take a uh, removing the weeds out of the garden because it's something that a relationship you have to keep maintaining uh, maintaining it and what saved my marriage because of the long hours and always always out working i think what saved me it's one of the love language that i was using without knowing actually at that point of time what it was about but i've always been kind of a affectionate kind of guy and uh, respecting other people and all that and and i will uh, I'll, I'll, i think i'll work i'll i'll uh, i'll talk about the five love language i guess first uh, you're going to talk about them first sure why not okay so then let us say hi to the people who are watching the show uh so uh, i can say hi to all of them frida navid uh sadana um hello everybody who's watching uh puna matish um leslie uh Previn Patel Dr PPP um wow. hello everybody who's watching thank hello, you everybody. so much um <laughs> you're listening to uh Jacques Vincent <laughs> aka Jack Vincent well my, my wife called me Jack for for 38 years so I think <laughs> so you're I'm Jack just, I'm Jack <laughs> so uh, Jack is going to talk about um the five love languages mm -hmm. that we all need to learn you need to know what yeah. love language you have and what love language your partner your loved yeah. ones have so go ahead jack well uh well in the love languages as as i said as a one one of the most important one i think i would say is the 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 words of aff affirmation 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 and uh, excuse my language is <laughs> affirmation is the word of affirmation meaning that and that's what saved me my marriage i would i would say because every time i'm so thankful for my wife to take care of my children and so thankful for her cooking my meals and taking care of me because we had so little time together that it had to be worthwhile you know it, it has to be it's not how much time you spend with someone that's important is how much quality time that you spend together that's important to understand because a lot of the people say oh man you work so hard but yes but the time that i am at home can't which is a lot of the people sometimes that they're at home but they're watching the football game or the hockey game or the baseball game but and and don't you dare pass in front of the tv i think you <laughs> it's you know that people get upset very quickly so i don't say because you're at home you're with your kids or you're spending quality time with your kids or your wife and this one of the love language as i will go through what a uh, second one is the quality time that you spend with your partners uh, some of them is you can buy them flowers or or tell them how much you love them but they want your time is their love language is they want to spend time with their partners it's whatever time that they can have that they have together they like to spend it together and in another love language is receiving gifts you know it started way down like uh, in the in the roman in the roman time you know which uh it, you show your affection or your uh your love with gifts you know like uh, it does not have to be an expensive gift just a gift a gift of love a, a gift that costs nothing sometimes but just to say thank you thank you for thank you for being there thank you thank you for being present in in my life jack that's so important what you just said is so important because a lot of us we don't know about the love languages so mm -hmm. my love language could be something uh like spending quality time right with yeah. my husband but his love language in in his love language that doesn't really mean anything so his love language could be me making him a cup of tea correct right correct. but if i don't know that and i keep giving him i keep shoving my time down his throat and he doesn't appreciate it that's going to get to me absolutely will get to him yeah and it'll get <laughs> to him because it's not his love language <laughs> And this can right? be, as we're going to talk about the personality it's exactly the same we're not two alike we're right? unique on our own and that's so, so important to know why so nobody at, taught us this so, so when at least you know that 
at least you can respect there because you can't, you don't change that. Is you're born with that. Is uh, uh, usually the love language. A lot of it is taken from your our parents and all that stuff. But we 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 invent a new one as we get into uh, relationship and stuff like that. But the thing is, is but we have two different ones. It's very rare, like I say, it's like personality. We're never the same. We always seem to marry opposite of us. Of us. And, and the third, I think the fourth love language is act of service. A lot of people, I think you're even part of that, is you want to give back. You want to give back to community. You want to give back to your, you're giving back your time. And, and, and that is worth gold in other people that are listening to you. It's, it's the act of service is something that it comes from within. It's not something that you invent. It's something that you are. And, and the, the fifth, uh, the fifth uh, love language is physical touch. Some people just like to be not touched. It, they want to be touched somehow because they feel love. You don't have to actually say it just by being you're touching how intimate you can be that for them it's enough to 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 feel value to relationship so so that's why when you understand the uh, if i take let's say me would be uh, words of affirmation is my wife and that's what saved my marriage i would believe so because i've always was grateful for whatever my wife did for me and i tell her you know I'm so grateful for what you do for me. Thank you. And 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 I've never stopped in 38 years, you know, uh, that, I, that I've been with her. And I think that's what keep, and I think our, our relationship still spark as almost like the first day we're together. We still walk in and hand on and in hands, you know, it's, I don't know, it just to me, it hasn't changed because I haven't stopped sharing this. Even sometime before I learned it, I was doing it without knowing. Now I know it, so therefore it's it's like when you learn something and you know why you're doing it. At least now you you can work on it better. You can better yourself. You you know if this is our love language or his love language, you can actually increase it. Meaning that focus on it. So Jack, so now your okay, so lo your love language is words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. But what about? How do you find out about what um, your wife's um, love language is? That is, well, that's my wife's love language. Oh, that's, okay, that's, that's and, her. And, and to me is, uh, uh, I like, uh, sometimes, of course, we can have more than one if you wish. Like, I'm sure you, you're, not, you're saying yes, that your, your primary love language, it's kind of like the personality. The personality is your strong, you look, oh, you. I get it, the, the, the one that, uh, speaks you to you with. most, right? Yes. yes. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. And that doesn't mean the okay. other ones are not important to you, yes. but the one that you value most to you. And between the words of affirmation, the quality time, the receiving gift, that's either the act of service or the physical touch. These are the five love language. You can have more than one, but you will be strong. That will get you. Like that will say it all. You know, it's is you'll be your primary love language. So they're, they're all fantastic. Yeah. If we could use them all, all the time, that would be just op optimal. optimal, well, it, optimal. It, it is not manipulating. A lot of people will say, well, you, know, you manipulate people, but it's, you don't. It's, you actually speak their language. But you not, can't fake it, that stuff, I think, no. right? I, fine, it, 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 it has is, to come for sure absolutely. authentically. So, I mean, knowing that stuff just makes you more aware um, uh, you know, of, of, um, of conducting better relationships. I, I think that's so important. So yeah. if this is new to people, um, and some people would listen to this and, and say, ah, you know, I buy my <laughs> wife flowers all the time, Correct. you know, and you're right. Maybe that's not what she appreciates, right? How do we find out? Do we just plain and simple ask? Well, it's... Again, you, you, you will know when you, when you have it, because if as, as a relationship, as you go through a relationship, uh, you know, if your partner's with you, you know, like, uh, do you live, you know, a, a life of a, you, you do her thing, she does her thing, he does his thing, and there's really nothing in common. You know, the only thing in common sometimes is the kids. And, and that's mostly why so many 
couple divorced after after the kids left the nest because I was the only glue that was holding the couple together. And but as as personal, like meaning that the the, the, the man and the wife partner or the whatever partner is, I guess in today I got you got to be open to all to all possibility. But <laughs> it's it's uh, yes. it's it, none of us are the same. So when you I guess when you live with someone, you you get to know it, or you or at least when you know it you get to learn it meaning that you can ask what what is someone that what do you what do you want like what do you what makes you happy what mm -hmm. because if you buy flowers and she don't appreciate it somehow well you know that's not the love language it doesn't yeah. take a genius to know that one well, exactly but and, then you know that can be miscommunicated and misinterpreted as being ungrateful but really yeah. that could it could just be that she's not really fascinated yeah. by flowers because yeah. <laughs> some, some my wife you can buy her whatever gift that you want it makes no difference that's not what she's into Yes. So, uh, uh, an appreciation it'll be so much more yeah, valuable forward. because yeah. she would appreciate it because yeah. that's what she would, that's her love language. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what else I do; it does not count as much as an appreciation, you know, as a, an affirmation of something that she does, something that she cooks. Sometimes she cooks for my empl my employees at lunchtime. We're having muffins and stuff like that, and. Uh, we laugh about it because she always did that. Even when I was working like 80 to hundred hours a week, uh, she, she baked for the, for my employees and all that, because I always came home and said, man, I said, you guys, you just said, keep on coming, keep them coming. I said, they're yummy, you know, and just having stayed stuff like that, you know, it, it, it makes her want to do it. Yes. And, yes. and you'll find out in personalities when we get into the personalities, there are personalities will make you do anything because they're such people person that when they ask you something, you, you can't say no to them. You can't okay. say no to them. So Jack, just to recap, the five love languages, because I'm going to ask a question of our audience. Okay. Okay. So words of affirmation. Yeah. Um, help me here. because Quality I, time. Quality time. Receiving gifts. Gifts. Acts okay. of service. Acts of service. And physical touch. And physical touch. Okay. So my question is this. Do you know, our viewers, do you know your love language? My love language? Well, our, our viewers, uh, I'm putting that question out to the viewers, oh, okay. to the audience. Uh, what are your love languages? Do you have more than one? Do you even know your love languages? Do you know the love language of your loved ones, of your partner, of your, um, I don't know, who, whoever's really important to you? Do you know what your, what your love language is? And so I'm going to, I'm going to um, see, I'm going to go through them and see um, if we have any uh, response. But you, you already said, Jack, you said your love language is uh, acts of service. It's a, it's again, it's one of them. It's not my most important, but it's, it's right up there. Like, of course, with my partner is because again, we, between partners and between uh, friendship is different because of course, I, uh, from a, from a point of view, from a friendship, uh, I will not be, it's not going to be the quality, quality time or the physical touch <laughs> it's it's going to be something else it could be the, just the word of affirmation or the uh maybe it could be the quality time that we're spending as friends together or whatever but you'll find out that if someone is always at your place obviously they enjoy being at your place uh if they've never come to your place but the you, you communicate through facebook or through other means of communication is obviously is that they're, they're, they want quality time with you it's but if no words are exchanged as far as affirmations and all that uh it, it's kind of hard to find out which like that's something that's so personal because the the five love language as you read through it is is something that you know what is there to you so when you ask a question to somebody what is that if when you when you tell them what all there are the five love language then 
they will pick which one is important to them. Then when they've picked it, you can you can find out a lot quicker. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Because someone who's watching this show and learning about this, now they are equipped with this knowledge and now they can find out more information. If you know, this is so important, Jack. When you said that couples um couples are, you know, they're they're choosing not to stay together once the kids are gone. That is the truth uh, of, of today's uh, um, yeah. marriage predicament. So it, it is pretty sad because it doesn't have to be that way. If there was, no. um, you know, a little bit more c communication going on, maybe then this way um, people can uh, yeah. uh, 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 improve their relationship. I, I, I'm not a love doctor by right? all means. <laughs> But Me you, you, but I, I, I do recognize, you know, you can see relationship where the spark's still there, you know, yeah. 25, 10, 15, 20, yeah. 30 years later. You know, I know 88-year-old people, you know, they're still holding in just like they were uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. And and to me, that's it's important. And you, nice. you know that there's a connection in between those yeah. two that yeah. ha was not lost. Oh. Is a lot of the time in relationship, you know, like you kind of grow apart. And, yeah, you do. and 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 it's sad because the love is there was there but somehow it's not hasn't been maintained you know it's like putting a little a garden hose you know making a prick a little hole into it every time there's scars along the way when there's a scar something you said that hurt your partners or whatever way that you said it is it's a little hole in, in the garden hose if you wish mm -hmm. and and these are the scars that's your life and we learn from it but the more holes we prep into the hose at, at one point there's there's the water just keeps running out you you're know? right and it's all right and it, it is important to understand that when you when you have a partner and, and you want to spend a life with them that you, you it's like a car you have to maintain your car to last a long time you got to maintain it it's yes. everything is into the maintenance a, a wife or a partner is no different. We we have to maintain the couple's life as as we go through life. Thank you. So let's see what um, if there's any uh, comments here. Uh, so thank you, Anna and Robert. Oh, Robert J. Moore. Oh. Yeah, Debbie. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Hi. Um, so I, we have from someone. I have two dominant love languages. Um, so uh the physical touch and words of affirmation mm. so this is this is colleen she she definitely knows what her uh, love languages are um she also says the platinum rule rather than the golden rule of we we do unto others as you would have on sorry as you would have done to you yeah. Instead, say focus on what makes them happy. Yeah. Well, That's yeah, absolutely. But sometimes, what do to others what others uh, or you want others doing to you? Sometimes, but if you don't have the same love language, it does not work out. You know what I'm saying? If if his love language is uh, uh, words of affirmation, but you never tell the person that. Uh, how much do you love him and all that? How many times do you tell your, your partner how much you love them and you appreciate them? And if she, her love language uh, is act of service or physical touch and you never touch her, you know, you, you just keep talking, but there's no touching, uh, she'll miss that. She, 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 she has no choice but to think that you don't love her as much as, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, it, because you, you could be the touchy one that touches the whole hands or the every time you're talking to him you're putting your hand on his shoulder or his uh, his waist or something you know you love to touch but that may not be his thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so would you leave me alone you're gonna give me space and, and and this this is like i said we all have different it's, it's like you're going to be the personalities as we 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 have such different personalities and different love languages uh, it's kind of like the book, like your men are from Mars and women are from Venus. You know, when you actually think of that, wow, as how do we make it together? You know, seriously. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're you're so right because uh, we can we can misinterpret a lot of stuff. Yeah. 
right? A lot For of sure. stuff. And it, that's, the, that's the things that really puts us in trouble uh, with each other. So let's communicate our love languages. Thank you so much, Jack. Uh, hello, Ka Cameron. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so are we ready to move on to uh, personality type? Because Robert wants to know. <laughs> Absolutely, whenever you want. So let's do it. The, okay. the personality types. Well, the personality type, basically, there's only four basic ones. Is you can, there's many books on personalities. Uh, they use different names, different numbers, but it kind of all means exactly the same thing. That's either uh, you're type one, type two, three, or four, or you're type A, B, C, and D, or you're or you're a whale, you're, you're, uh, you're a nurse, you're a shark, you're, you know, everybody use different language, but I'm going to use one in particular because that's, you got to pick one of them. I'm not going to invent one. So we might as well use one uh, out of a book. It's called Personality Plus, I believe. And one of the personalities, uh, it's called a, a cleric. A cleric, you have the cleric, the sanguine, you have the melancholy and the phlegmatics. That's the four personality that exist. You are born with one and you will die with one. It's in your DNA. You cannot change a personality. And that's what's important to understand. People think, I'm going to change them. You're not going to change nobody. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you, when you first met, everything is beautiful and all that. And, you know, it's, oh, you'll have a lifetime to change her or change him. But it does not work that way. Is there something, it's in your, your DNA. And you, you, you're going to be just like the... Uh, the love language is uh, you're, you're dominate in one, always leading with one personality stronger than everything else. But you can be more than one. So there's a test that you can actually do that you will determine the, uh, actually this week I will have, uh, I'm, my site is not quite ready, but I think uh, towards the end of the week, I will have a site ready with, uh, you can actually go on, this, on my site and get the, do the personality test. So what out. is that website, uh, Jack? is the best kept secret book.com. Okay, we'll and post that. And personality the... test, and they'll be able to take the test and find out who am I? Because the thing is, we're quick to judge everybody else, but who am I? Like, who am I? What, what is my personality? So as much as it's important to understand what is my love language, what is my personality? So that I can understand others better, because this is kind of what, what uh, uh, when I do businesses and all that stuff, that's why I kind of use that stuff. Nobody knows about it, but it's so helpful in either in management, in uh, in a supervising role or team leader roles or or in leadership role is how important it is to uh, to understand other people because we don't see things on the same point of view. We, no matter if we say something, we don't see it quite the same way. You know, you can have a speaker uh, give a speaking at an event and you can be 10 person and you're gonna each take notes, but none of us will take the same notes. Why is that? It's always the same speech. It's because we understand it in different ways. And okay. based on their personality is there's personality that will absorb a lot more than other personality about what's been spoken about. And, and the cleric is one of the strongest personality that there is. If you have a boss or a friend as a cleric, well, Let's put it this way. He's never wrong. <laughs> Understand that. All right. So I, I, I can, I can uh, pinpoint a few people like yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But they're, but they're, we're not they're... judging. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but that personality, the cleric personality, that they're born leaders. You know, they're they're very compulsive people. And uh, uh, again, we're talking about on the strength, like uh, on the high strength of that personality. Yes very compulsive, they're strong-willed, but very decisive. They're very goal-oriented. They like to do stuff, you know? And they like to organize. They're very good at organizing, but they're also extremely good at delegating the work. So they can do more because they want something else to come in, you know? They, 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 they get bored fast when they're doing the same thing over and over again. Some personality can do the same thing over and be very happy with, but that's not a cleric. A cleric personality is... They want more. They just that now they just have a drive in them that, that they just they just they don't want. It's not the money or something. It's just the challenge of doing something new. And and again, you get into uh, 
they're, they're not very easily discouraged, I tell you, is that they're confident, they're, uh, they're extremely well in the emergencies. If you were to have an emergency, you'd want a cleric in charge, I tell you, because these are the take in charge kind of people. You'll see it, a lot of it in rescues and uh, firemen and their extreme high clerics. And they're very optimistic. So you got two person out of the four personality, you got two personalities that are, uh, what do you call that is, uh, forgive me, uh, not optimistic, how do you call that is extrovert and two personality that are introverts. So right away by knowing if you're an introvert person or extrovert person kind of eliminates a lot of some of the personality that there is because to the personality you need to be an extrovert to be there. And we get into another extrovert personality which is a sanguine. You know, a sanguine is, oh, you recognize them everywhere. You know, it's the, when you see them there, either, let's say as a woman, they, they, they wear bright colored dresses, flowers, and, and they go into a store and they come up with two or three friends, you know, but they, they get out of the store, they don't know where they park their car, but man, they're gonna have two guys looking for the cars for her. It, it's, she's such, it's such a, a personality that just makes friends so easily. And, and again, they're the life of a party. If you want to have a party, have a sanguine, do it because they're the life of a party. I know if you see someone, all the people are gathered around, that's a sanguine personality for sure. It, and, and again, they're, how would I say, they, they make friends so easily there. They have great memories for colors. They're very enthusiastic personalities. They're, they're very expressive when they speak and they can make anyone do anything because they thank you in advance of something you even have, they didn't even ask. But when they ask, you have no choice to say yes, because everybody wants to, uh, how would I say that? Support them. Support them, but again, they're so nice to you that it's not a possibility to say no to that. <laughs> and, and, and again, they're, but they, they have the other side of it. Like they, they're, they're a little bit immature. They're immature because they stay like, you know, like a, what do you call that? That uh, Peter Pan kind of a personality, you know, like they, they, they fly to Neverland. <laughs> uh, gotcha. They, but they're very creative. They're storyteller, you know, they, 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 they don't hold grudges. They're very uh, uh, fr friendly personality, you know, but on, on the other side of the coin, you know, there's always two sides to all coins. You know, they, they they're very disorganized because they're so busy having fun that they don't have time to organize any, uh, to organize anything. So they, they, they interrupt a lot and they answer for a lot of the other people because they can't wait for them to finish what they were saying. They can actually add to that. Uh, they, they're very forgetful personality. You know, if you were to, to find a babysitter and, and she's a sanguine and you say, well, in two weeks, I'm going to need a babysitter and you, uh, would you babysit my kid? Oh, she'll say yes. But that day when they, that day comes, she won't be there because she forget about it. <laughs> it's, it's because they're very forgetful. They have so many things to, to have fun with and then they just keep forgetting. So again, they, they don't follow budget. You know, they're not administrative type of personality. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, how would I say is no, you never give a budget, a family budget to a sanguine. Because I guarantee you, they'll never happen. <laughs> so there's um, there's a comment. Would charismatic be related? Extremely, to? extremely to a sanguine. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So like I said, that, there that there, are people, there are people. Anything that's optimistic, charismatic, they 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 have it all. They because they're people person. They're mm -hmm. people magnet. So everybody gathers. When you see a crowd gather around a person and listening to them. And yes, they exaggerate a lot. They have a little story like this. They they're gonna they're gonna make it their own. Trust me, <laughs> may not all be true, but they make it very interesting. You know, they they'll, they can take a boring story and make it so interesting. And and people love that stuff. It's, I uh, love it. I it, love it because I know that like as you're talking, uh, of course I'm thinking, is this me? Like you know what I mean? Because I'm trying to find uh, little little points in in this yeah. and say 
see which one is me. But then I'm sure the audience is also listening. And you're probably thinking of not only yourself, but also the people around you. You're trying to pinpoint, oh, who's what, who's, this is really yeah. interesting. I love this stuff. Because because the, the, the part that was the hardest to find is because you're, you're leading with one, but now what are your others? And then you'll find out when you do the test. Which, which, which other one are the strongest as you go? Like out of the four, you could be three of them. And uh, I'm, like to me, I'm all four, but I'm very low on one. Like the other one is I'm a cleric by nature myself, but having learned this personality, I can control my cleric uh, because cleric are very impatient. You know, like we're goal oriented, we're dele we delegate a lot of the stuff, you know, in business sometimes it, you, you got to make decision on the spot and and sometimes not the easiest decision if you have to let's say let go of someone is uh uh you have to make a decision that that you don't really sometimes that, that personality is not very we're not very emotional when it comes we're not sympathetic person we're not very sympathetic towards others and how would i say that it's not i'm not saying something nice but i'm just saying that we um well, you're I, I'm just trying to find a way to say it in a, in, in a nice manner is because we're unsympathetic. You say, you know, because we think the other ones are weak because they're, they're different personalities. We think that because one is in charge and all that is not necessarily the good thing because you can be in charge or, or uh, act as a fear, like putting the fear in people. No, that's a personality that uh, they need to relax. You know, they, they're never at fault. So they don't take uh, they don't take blame very well. You know, they, they, they don't get ulcers. They give ulcers to other people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're very strong manipulator because they're strong personality. They manipulate a lot and they're impatient. Uh, they're unemotional. So doesn't mean they don't feel something, but they they feel it's a weakness to feel something. And and depending how the strength of your cleric personality you are is, uh, uh, and I've always wondered sometimes because I wasn't always unsympathetic against employees or people, you know, and you don't know why, but when you start to know why, does it make sense? Okay, yeah. so now I'm going to try to work on that because yeah. it doesn't have to be so extreme, you know? You, you yeah. Well, that's the whole point, isn't it? Uh, you you can't know, change your personality, but you can tone it down. Yes, you become aware, right? You become okay, aware. Jack, let's let's move because I don't wanna I don't want us to run out of time. So okay. let's move to the third personality. The third right? personality. Well, we get the melancholy. The melancholy do usually are seen as uh, the engineers, the accountant, someone that does can be at the desk that. Uh, that does administration work and all that, that love numbers. They, they, the analytical person, they're a very serious personality. They're, they're genius. The genius are usually in this type of uh, personality. They're talented and creative. They're, uh, they love checklists. You know, if you, if you, if you got to speak to a group of uh, melancholy, you better pull out your papers and graph and, and everything for them to see it because they need to see it on graphs, on paper, on they need to see charts and they, they, they're very detail conscious people. So you better be organized in, in, in an orderly fashion because you won't get it because they actually are almost like a perfectionist personality. And having said that, it, there's a good and the bad of being a perfectionist because they're as, as being the perfectionist, you, you expect the best, but it's hard to get per perfection, you can't. So they, they get depressed a lot. They're a person that they at the party, you know, they're they're just there, but you don't know they're there really. They're they're they mind their own business. They they they, they procrastinate actually a lot. They they want everything perfect before you even start. So when you want to start a, a business or you want to start a project, uh, these are the people to give it to see numbers and see projections but they're not the one gonna do it because they're scared of things. They need all the facts before they actually start something. Mm -hmm. And that is in that personality uh, group that you'll see that. And uh, uh, when you get into the fourth personality, you get the phlegmatics. The phlegmatics is, oh my goodness, they're the, they're the nicest people around. Is it there? 
actually they're the one that probably has the most friends would be a phlegmatic because they're non-judgmental personality. They, they are very low key personality. They're very easy going and relaxed kind of person. They're very patient with people. They, they don't like uh, the disturbance. They don't like to, uh, to offend people. They're, they're very, uh, uh, they take good care uh, of the other, their partners or whatever. They're, they're low key people. You know, you go, you get to a party, they're sitting in the couch somewhere in a chair. They just, you know, as a kid having a, a, that kind of phlegmatic personality, you know, they're the kids that you put them in the corner with a couple of toys and he can play all afternoon and be the greatest thing ever. And he's happy. I said, there's nothing wrong with him. It's just, that's his personality. You know, you give to a kid as a cleric, you know, that man, they all just be destroying something. You gotta watch them over. <laughs> you, you know, it's insanguine. They're so curious. They wanna know everything. You know, why, 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 why this, why this, why this, the, the sky is blue. They wanna know everything. They're very curious personality. But melancholy and phlegmatic are into the, uh, what did I say a little while ago? They're, you said they're introvert? Introvert, introvert, the two introvert personalities. So see, you're an introvert person. You're, you're in these two personalities, most likely. At hmm. least you're leading with that's, one of these two. That's so, that, that is so cool. So people can go to your website uh, to www.thebestkeptsecretbook.com and, um, and actually do the personality test. Yeah. Uh, and find out a little bit more about themselves. I want to make sure that we um, acknowledge people who have joined us. Rosemary, thank you. Raza um, and Farnaz and Maureen have joined us. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today as we um, have heard a lot on the love languages and uh, your personality types. Okay, so just to recap, there are four personality types according to the person what would you say the personality book that yeah the personality plus plus the personality plus um there is the um okay so you tell you you tell us um jack number one was the cleric the cleric as uh, sanguine sanguine melancholy, uh, melancholy and, and phlegmatic. phlegmatic yeah okay so and you say that we could all have some of each personality type, Correct. but one would be um, more dominant. Yes. Okay. And you, you, and you live with the dominant one. And you live with the dominant one. Okay. So you, you know me now for a while. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, what do you think the dominant uh, personality type in Della? In Della? Well, I, the, the, I would say the dominant would have to be a sanguine. It definitely had to be. You, you're a sanguine. You're because you're a people person. You, you, again, between the personality and the love, uh, the love language, the act of service is your thing. I think. I, I, I don't know, but I, I think that would be there because you wouldn't be doing what you're doing today because you, you're giving back to the people. You, you're doing that out of your heart. And, and that is not something you invent, it's something of who you are. And having said that, but you, you're most likely your strong personality would be a sanguine, is the other ones would be what you do behind the, behind the scene, it's, it's hard for me to say, but most likely a cleric, you have clerics in you because you're, you're, you're focused on where you're going, you know, you're, 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 you, 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 you plan stuff. You may not be good at it because of your sanguine personality is you, you just, sometimes we have partners that picks up all the piece of when we're going and do something because <laughs> I'm the same, you know, it's, a, I'm a cleric and all that, but I have to have somebody behind me, you, you know, like they say behind a great man or a great woman, there's, there's a great woman. And, and this, that saying is so true because you cannot be all good at everything. You, yeah. you, you know, when you're leading with whatever personality that you are and you're aware of it, then you can put the right people at the right place. And that's kind of what I've been doing all my life is if when I associate with somebody, I know they're that type of personality, then I kind of would deal in that, uh, 
don't put them in the wrong place because they will not be happy. Oh, they will not perform. So good. And, and and having said that, you know, like you know, we we always wonder what our spouse or your partner, you know, uh, sometimes we marry opposite. So it's important to know that when you understand their personality and you know you cannot change it, you it's then you understand your partner a whole lot better because it's like, oh, that's why he's like that. That's why I'm always wrong. <laughs> Whenever I said I'm always wrong, I don't know why I just can't win an argument because he's a, he's a cleric. Cleric don't lose arguments, mm -hmm. even though they're wrong. <laughs> uh, that that puts so much light into things for me personally. Of course, Colleen says Della is great at everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a friend. That's good. Yeah, I, I need to have more friends like God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. But it's so true that uh, what, what you said about people perhaps being employed in the wrong positions, uh, that doesn't really engage them because they're th it's not really in alignment with their personality type. Uh, so it's so important for for companies, you know, to, to employ people in that really engages their strength um, that puts them to to work with you know according to their passions uh, I to the you know and and if you're doing something and you feel like you have to do it but you don't really enjoy it then that's no fun and and as an employee you're not really uh, productive in a company so you help out people um, that way as well don't you yeah, like because on my, my other side of on the business side of, of things is uh, I, 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 I'm aware that not, uh, they say that 75 percent of the people, the employees right now at work in North America are not engaged at work. Yes. So can you imagine? And that was these were pre COVID uh, uh, pre COVID uh, measures, right? meaning that they were pre COVID. Can you imagine what it looks right now with the with the the COVID going on right now in companies and all that? How much how much it changes the the the, the face of the businesses right now? As our businesses are in trouble, and yeah. and we we need every tools in our toolboxes to to help businesses out. And 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 being a, an entrepreneur myself and doing restructuring of companies, that was always my secret weapon because when I go into companies. Uh, I, I I treat employees like not like numbers. You know, most the management style that's out there right now is, is a lot of them are cleric personalities because they're the one leading the companies. But the problem is, is that when you're not aware of it, you use a lot of fear driven kind of uh, uh, action towards your employees, meaning that they don't have a choice to do what you're saying because you're their boss. But if only they knew that if they would respect the people below them and, and actually start listening to their, to how to solve problem. Because sometimes when I join companies, I actually go to the employees first because management tells me what's their problem, but I go to the employees and a lot of the time, the employees already know how to solve a lot of the problems. So what's the problem? Is management not listening to employees? So having said that, I use that as a weapon because I don't have to know at all. There's people that's been doing the same job for five, 10, 15 years. They know that job inside out. How am I to know better than they are? So they're the one that knows, but because at some point in time, somewhere in the, in the company, someone to share something with their superiors and being flat out turned down, so they never share it again. And yeah. they'll pass it on to their new employees. I will start, don't you dare tell them anything. They're just punch in, punch out. So having said that, the company uh, engagement, employee engagement, it goes to a lower level. Yes. So appreciation of your employees, you know, doesn't even cost a dime, not even a nickel, not even a penny, but it sure makes a huge difference in the company mm -hmm. bottom line, I tell you, it, it really does. Because again, when we get into the love language and the personality, guess what? Affirmation is right up there and people, love to be appreciated and it costs nothing i love that so, um i was doing a course jack and uh, part of this course was to um a, to practice uh, words of affirmation acknowledgement and so every day uh, for a period of time 
um, I uh, went around asking people uh, what they would appreciate um, if someone did for them, what would they appreciate? And you know, most people said that, most people said that if they were to be acknowledged for the things they do, they would be so happy. Absolutely. And, and a happy person uh, that works for a company will work better for a company, will, will, will have less sick days, will be more concentrated on their job or his job. And everything ties in together. You have no idea how much because a happy employee will perform at his best level. Whatever for sure. that level is, will perform at their best level. Yes. And all management needs to do is to understand that that person is working at their best level that they can, whatever that level is, depending on the personality. There's personality that will just do what is asked, and there's personality that will do above and beyond what they're asked. But if you don't, if you treat your employee with respect uh, and with dignity, they'll give you more. Yes. They'll give you more for it. Yes. And and actually, when you're looking for employing more people, that actually will help you employ the right people because they don't want to lose uh, when a department of a company uh, gel together, meaning it, 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 it's like a well oiled machine. They don't want somebody else coming and ruining it. So they'll make sure that if they invite a person to come and work there, it'll be the right person. Yes, absolutely. For and, sure. Mm, so, You're so right. Um, so, um, Jack, one more time, if people want to reach you, I know you said your website is not up and running yet. It will be done by the end of the month. Uh, I want to make sure that I, I, you know, people can find you if they're looking for you. You're on Facebook under uh, Jack Vincent. Uh, the spelling is in the post. So please make sure that you look for the right person. Uh, and um, also, um, I want to leave you a few more minutes. If you have anything else to add to the talk, please go ahead and take this time. Well, wow. thank you, Della. As I think the important message is, is to understand this. Understanding personalities and love languages can it hurt not to? Absolutely. It's, it's, it is so important. It's to understand the, your partners, to understand your children, to understand, it's, it's, it is so important. Understand the relationship with your boss, with your employer or, your, uh, or the people around you, your family, because it, within family, we have different personality. When you understand that, then at least you're in a much better position to say, well, they, this personality is speaking out to me, but it, he loves me. <laughs> it's, it's, we don't mean to hurt people depending on the personality that you are. It's just that this is the, our personality that we lead with. So when you understand all that, now you understand it's, it's almost like being, uh, being uh, not prepared, being, uh, well, you've been prepared to do battle because you can pick your battles depending on the subject, depending on the uh, what's going on around you. You can pick, uh, depending on their personality, what to let go because of their personality. So you don't have to take things so personally. And from a husband, from wives, from partners, you know, when, when someone says something, at least now you can look at face value based on their personality. And to me as a, I'm all for peace is that nobody needs war in a relationship or at work. It's peace is in company engagement, employee engagement, uh, relationship engagement, everything ties together based on personality and love languages and all that stuff. That's how we communicate and human being communicate together. So having said that, I, I, I definitely want you to go to my site and, and, and look at it, take the test. It, it's cost nothing. And believe me, you'll be surprised of sometimes the personality you may lead to. <laughs> so, so you'll understand and have a good laugh at it. The more we, we learn about um, ourselves and each yeah. other, the better we can make our relationships. 
Absolutely. Uh, so and and that's that's ultimately number one, right? We we need we need to work on our relationships. So thank you so much for everything you do, Jack. Thank you for having this available for everyone to use. Um, this is this is amazing. This is such big help to a lot of people. And if you've been watching this show and you found it helpful, please go ahead and share that uh, with the people you love. Uh, let Jack's knowledge reach more people to to bring more joy, love, and peace into <laughs> other people's lives, right? Because that's what we want. That's what we want. So again, you can reach um, uh, that test. Uh, at www.thebestkeptsecretbook.com or uh, if you need to get in touch with Jack, he's on Facebook under Jack Vincent. Uh, go ahead and um, communicate with him. So um, Jack, our, our hour is up. Already? Yes. I know, so that. much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank it you was for my pleasure. everything you do. Thank you. Um, I, I wish you the very best. And I hope to speak to you again very soon. Absolutely. Well, you, you, your wish is my command. <laughs> <laughs> have, have a great day, Dana. That's how we okay. do. <laughs> and thanks to all of you to listening to that. And hopefully we get something positive out of it. Thank you very much. And thanks for everyone who's been watching the show. Um, thank you so much. Um, uh, Debbie says, uh, thank you both very much. Quite insightful. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, thank you, Colleen. Thank you, everybody who's watched the oh, show. You. I hope you um, find a lot of value as I have, my friends. Take what you want and leave the rest. And Absolutely. make this the best life possible. <laughs> as always, this has been Della's voice, hoping to spark your soul. Till next time, take care.